everyone, I'm Carl Johnson and in this video we're going to take a look at code blocks in Squarespace. Before we get started, Squarespace brought out some updates not long ago. Um, I had this video planned before the updates came out, but they sort of got released in the middle of while I was still planning it. Um, but basically, you need to be on the business plan and above to be able to use code blocks now in the site. If you use the personal plan, it tells you to upgrade to a business plan. So, so the code block can be used for a massive number of things. It's a very versatile block. It can be used for embedding third-party plugins, um, social media posts. But in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to just add basic elements to it and how to reference them to the CSS, to the custom CSS, and just to create something a little bit different. So if we dive into Squarespace and um, we'll take a look around. So we've got a new empty page here and the first thing I'm going to do is go over to edit the page and then I'm going to select the code block from the list. In fact, let's go crazy, we'll add two code blocks. And then I'll just delete this text because I'm not going to use that at the moment. So let's stack these next to each other or sit them next to each other. Okay, so this first block, I'm going to assign this an ID that we can reference in the CSS in a second. So if we go with, let's delete this. And we want to put a left chevron. I think that's what the goal is, probably a more technical term. And then we want div space class equals and then a quotation mark. Now we can call this what we want um, so long as it doesn't interfere with Squarespace's class ID so we don't want to be calling it things like header, footer, um, main, anything with SQS. Um, so we need to give it something unique. I mean you can call it Alan if you wanted or Paul but you know if you're building a website for a client you don't really want to be putting things like that in. So what we'll call this one is We'll go home box left and then another quotation mark and then right shift on. And then you'll notice that Squarespace has put the close and tag in. So I'll just copy that, apply, and then we'll do the same on this side, but we'll change this one to oops, we'll change this one to right. So the same again, div class equals quotation mark I would change this to right with a quotation mark and then the chevron and the reason we've named one left and one right is that we can do different things with these if they had the same name then the CSS we put in would cover both blocks at the same time so we can give this one on the left a different color to this one on the right or different size text so now that we've got the name I'm going to copy this one again we're going to jump over to the CSS editor so we go to design and then custom CSS and then I'm going to go with dot home box left and then a squiggly bracket and you notice that Squarespace has automatically put the second squiggly bracket in. Just jump down to there just to give us a bit of space. And then we want to put one in for the right side. The same again. We'll just save that. Go back to the page. Now let's put some text into these blocks. So if we go to, let's just grab some lorem ipsum, some placeholder text. And we'll put this in. Okay, you see that that's just body text now, that's the, the standard text that we've got for the whole of the site. Um, so we wanna put a header in there we need to put 
depending on whether you want heading one, heading two, or heading three. We're going to go with heading one for now. Left chevron, H1, and then right. And then we'll put our title. Okay, let's just copy that over to the next block. Apply that. And then in between these tags, we're going to do the same. Let's change that just to match. Uh, we'll apply that. Okay, so let's say we want to put some colour now behind these two separate boxes and um, maybe change the text alignment on this side so it goes back to back with this one. So we go over to back to the custom CSS and in this home box left, what we're going to do is we'll change the text alignment first. We'll put text dash align and then colon and then write. And a semicolon. Now the reason for putting these semicolons at the end is it closes this line off. So if we were to not have that and then we were to put something else underneath, it would not work basically. So let's say we want to now put some colour behind this left block. So what we'll do is we'll go to background and colour. Remember, for people in the UK, it's spelled the American way for CSS. And then let's just grab a colour in its hex format. So if we go to, I've got this handy little plugin in Chrome called Colorzilla. I'll leave a link below for it. Um, it just allows you to either grab a colour from a page or pick a colour for yourself. So let's go with, it's just going off, off white, greyish off white. And then we want to, Grab that hex code, okay on that, and then we'll come back over here. Now we need to put a hashtag in, and then paste the colour. And you'll see that that has put a background colour in over, uh, behind this text. Now it's running out to the edges, so we want to put some padding in around that as well, because it looks a bit silly, doesn't it, going out to the edge. So if we do the same, we put a semicolon in down to the next line and we'll go padding colon and we'll try 20 px there we go that looks much better and then over to this box on this side obviously the, we want a, the text to stay back to back and it is so we won't put text align in there's no no need to do that we'll go put the padding in Just to bring it all in alignment and then we'll put a let's put a different background color in this one let's just copy this and i'll go back over to colorzilla and just pick a different color so let's go with let's go with this light blue we'll copy that paste it over let's put the hashtag in and there we go and then save. So there we go. That's a brief intro introduction to the code blocks. I've got plenty more tutorials that are going to be coming up in the future about how to use this, how to do more advanced things with it. I mean, we've literally just scratched the surface of what we can do with this block in this tutorial, but I'm going to leave a link below to some resources so you can have a mess around with the background colors, the font sizes, just have a play around with it the worst thing you can do is break it and just start again that's the best way to learn um hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something from it if you would like to see more tutorials please do subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in the next video